cooperating or clashing over the killing of Jamal Khashoggi. Turkey's president says the Saudi journalist was the victim of a savage premeditated murder. But other questions remain unanswered and he stopped short of blaming the Saudi leadership. So what now? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Imran Khan. Turkey's president had promised what he called the naked truth. 24 hours later, Recep Tayyip Erdogan delivered his much-anticipated speech to MPs in Ankara. He gave more details about the killing of Jamal Khashoggi. But the president said many questions remain unanswered, including who ordered his death and where's the body. Erdogan said the Saudi journalist was a victim of a savage murder planned days in advance. That contradicts Saudi accounts of an accidental killing. He says he doesn't doubt the credibility of King Salman, but is demanding answers and a full investigation into what happened in Istanbul three weeks ago. There was no mention of Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, who some suspect of ordering the killing of the writer who criticised him. Erdogan wants the identities of all involved, everyone from top to bottom, held accountable and the suspects to go on trial in Turkey. We will talk to our guests in a moment, but first let's hear more from the President. So far, the evidence we have shows Jamal Khashoggi was murdered brutally. Such brutality cannot be covered up in any way. It would hurt humankind's conscience. We would like Saudi authorities to show the same sensitivity to this murder. So far, the evidence we have shows Jamal Khashoggi was murdered brutally. Such brutality cannot be covered up in any way. It would hurt humankind's conscience. We would like Saudi authorities to show the same sensitivity to this murder. We have strong evidence that this was a premeditated murder. In the light of the information we have, everybody has questions. Here are the questions. These 15 people, why did they come to Istanbul on the day of the murder? Who ordered them to come to Turkey? We need an answer. Why was the building of the Consul General not open for investigation on the same day, only after so many days? Why so many incredible explanations? Where is the body of Jamal Khashoggi? Nobody knows where the body is. It is alleged that the body was given to a local cooperator. So who is the local cooperator? We need to know who that is. I personally don't doubt the sincerity of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz. On the other hand, it is very important that such a critical investigation about a murder is carried out by a truly unbiased and fair delegation with no doubt about their connections. We will follow this incident until the end. Whatever is required by our laws and by international laws, we will carry it out. In fact, I'd like to make a call from here today. My call is to first and foremost Saudi Arabia's King Salman and to senior administration. Istanbul is where the incident took place. Therefore, my offer is for these 15 people plus three people, the 18 arrested, to be tried in Istanbul. Let's bring in our guests. Joining us from London is Galip Delay. He's the research director at the Istanbul-based Arshark Forum and a fellow with Brookings Institution. In Nutley, New Jersey, we have Stephen Rogers. He's a member of the Trump for President Advisory Board and a former member of the FBI National Joint Terrorism Task Force. And also in London, we have Toby Cadman. He is an international lawyer. Welcome to you all. Uh, I'd like to start with you, Gallup. This was promised to be uh, the naked truth, but what we actually seemed to get was fully clothed diplomacy. It was a very strong speech by President uh, Erdogan, demanding answers, taking ownership of the intelligence leaks that we've seen over the last 18 days. Uh, what did you think of uh, the president's performance? Well, what was important in this speech is not what new information that it has revealed. Uh, it did not reveal any new information to my knowledge, but what it has done, it gave formality to what thus far has been uh, uh, the, uh, what thus far has been framed as being leaked from anonymous Turkish officials. So from now on, it's not an anonymous Turkish official leaking. It's the president of Turkey 
is basically owning thus far what has been leaked to the media. So it's important from this person. Secondly, what I saw in this picture is Erdogan being very careful to draw a distinction between the son, Mohammed bin Salman, and the king, uh, King Salman, and the son, Mohammed bin Salman, and the Saudi Arabia. And uh, even though he never uttered the word uh, Mohammed bin Salman, he never uttered the name of the Mohammed bin Salman, but everything thus far Turkey has been providing in one way or another is linking the case to Mohammed bin Salman himself. The thirdly that was important is Turkey is trying to get more and more international political sport, not just public sport, because thus far uh, the public sport and the public interest, the media sport in Jamal Khashoggi case has been very, very significant and has been very, very commendable. But nevertheless, there isn't still that much political sport that will be consequential regarding the uh, the regarding the uh, the position of MBS as well too. And for this, Turkey is particularly looking at the United States or what position that U.S. will take on the fate of the MBS because Turkey believes that unless you get the U.S. on board, no matter what Turkey does. The, uh, the result of its action will not be very consequential regarding the political career of MBS himself. So for let's, this, uh, let's I think bring into I just want to ask you another US. question. I just want to ask you another question, Gallup. Um, he also talked about wanting the 18 people who are arrested in Saudi Arabia to be tried in Turkey. That seems to be a deliberate turning up of the heat on Saudi Arabia, putting more pressure on them. Do you think that's right? I think exactly you're right. Uh, I think it's not only these 18 people to be tried in Turkey. He indicated that he can and will go more after the uh, Saudi Arabia because he he insinuated that it's not the this is not all Turkey has, and he put some very important question. For instance, like where is the body? Uh, who is the local collaborator? What is the nature of the relationship of these 18 people? So the question that he posed and he said that remains to be unanswered, and vote to answer them is very crucial for the evolution of these uh, cases because it's not only who these 18 people are, like these 15 or 18 people, but what is the map of the relationship of these 18 people with the power structure in Saudi Arabia? And when you look at it, particularly from the leaks that we have received thus far, a very single number of them, in one way or another, has been either directly or indirectly, closely or not that closely, related to Mohammed bin Salman. So the case has a legal foundation, which is a legal aspect that will involve these 18 people, etc. But then it will have also a political aspect, which is who gave the order? The question, for instance, one of the questions that he asked is who gave the order? It's not like what these 18 people has done, but who gave the order? I think the, the answer to this who gave the order will take us to the political aspect of this uh, crisis and the responsibility, the political responsibility for this crisis, because he did utter the word that it is premeditated and political. So therefore, it cannot be covered up by some rogue element or low-ranking officials within the state structure. But nevertheless, as I said before, in order for the Turkish uh, action to be consequential, I think Turkey is very, very interested to get the international community on board. And Turkey does not want to turn this uh, issue into geopolitical bickering between Turkey and Saudi Arabia and does not want to turn this into a bilateral crisis. It Let's bring in New Jersey here. Let's Saudi bring in New Arabia Jersey here and, and Stephen community. Rogers. Stephen, I just want to ask you, um, you were the former advisor to the Trump campaign. Clearly, this would have been watched by, uh, quite likely been watched by President Donald Trump. How do you think uh, he's feeling right now? What do you think is going through the US president's mind when he was watching uh, the Erdogan speech? Well, he's been very prudent in his approach towards this issue. Uh, he has consistently stated that he wants uh, irrefutable evidence uh, from the Turkish government, or from anyone for that matter, that this was a planned execution. Uh, what's going through his mind is, uh, A, he wants to see justice served. He is a president that does do the right thing. But he's also concerned about the impact that this could have on our relationship with Saudi Arabia especially with regard to our own national security and the many, many jobs, the economic impact it could have with regard to jobs here in the United States in relation to arms sales. I believe in his heart, he knows that uh, this was a, a terrible, terrible incident, uh, should have never happened, and uh, he really wants to get to the bottom of the truth. This is why he sent Secretary Pompeo to the region. This is why the CIA director is getting information as we speak. 
Uh, at the end of the day, I must tell you, a lot of people are scratching their heads with regard to the original story that the Saudis gave everyone on this planet. First, uh, they denied anything happened. Then uh, they said something happened that could have went rogue. I mean, you cannot expect people to believe several stories. So the Saudis are going to have to uh, come clean. Just, just tell the truth what happened. It'll be up to them to clean up their own mess in their own country. Gina Haspel, the CIA director, as you mentioned, is in Turkey. Uh, what conversations is she having? What message has she brought? And is she bringing with her um, the ability to be able to start a US-led investigation? Or is this simply a political visit? Well, I believe that uh, it's a good question. Uh, to begin with, she wants to get down to the truth. Uh, we're going to have to know what Turkey has. The president of Turkey didn't offer anything new, as far as I can see. Uh, he offered up uh, information that we already had. But as your prior guest said, it kind of plugs those leaks. It's an official statement from the president of Turkey. Uh, but she's going to come back, I'm sure, as Secretary Pompeo came back with, the information uh, that they need, that the president needs, to make a decision with regard uh, to how he will respond to this. Now, your question about, will it be a U.S.-led investigation? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I would suppose that it would be best for Turkey and Saudi Arabia to work with each other to uh, get to uh, the answers to the questions that they need. But the United States, is, as the president said, is not the policeman of the world. He's not the president of the world. He's the president of the United States. And he's looking out for our best interest. And hopefully, we're going to see a conclusion based on evidence. I want to underscore the word based on facts and evidence so that everyone will be satisfied. Gallup, I want to bring you here before we get into uh, international law with uh, Toby Cadman in London. I want to bring you here. You just heard uh, what Stephen Rogers just said. Uh, he wants to get to the truth, uh, to the bottom of all of this. Does he want to get to the truth and the bottom of all of this? Or is this scrambling now to save the relationship between Saudi Arabia and Turkey because money talks? Well, unfortunately, the uh, Trump administration, Trump himself, uh, gave quite uh, contrasting uh, answers thus far uh, to the questions. Uh, if he wants to get the evidence or if he wants to get the truth, I think it should not be that hard. And I'm sure the Turkish... Uh, security establishment and intelligence establishment will more or less share uh, many things with uh, their U.S. counterparts if they haven't done so uh, up until now. So in this regard, I don't, uh, I wouldn't, I don't expect many uh, trouble in the United States getting evidences. And Turkey has all interest to provide the United States with uh, evidences because it wants to get U.S. Uh, on the board as well too uh, in this uh, crisis. Yes, uh, tr Jamal Khashoggi was not a U.S. citizen, but he was a U.S. resident. Uh, as far as I know, according to U.S. law, he can be regarded as a U.S. person. His daughter is a U.S. citizen. He was writing for a Washington Post. Uh, so, uh, therefore, like Turkey has all the interest, as I said, like to get the U.S. on board in this matter. Let's but bring in Toby Cadman in London has, here. Uh, Toby, you're an international lawyer. You clearly understand the way this all works. This is a, almost a unique case. This was a murder that took place um, in Saudi sovereign territory, the consulate in Istanbul, yet uh, the president of Turkey says he wants those people tried in Istanbul. Is there precedent for this? What's the, what, do, what shape does any trial in Turkey take, uh, look like? And can it happen indeed? Well, uh, it raises a number of questions. Um, I mean, f first of all, uh, the question of whether a consular mission has the same status as a full diplomatic mission or an embassy. Um, and the question of um, sovereignty is something which has been tried and tested in a number of cases. So it's, so it's not um, a question of absolute immunity. Uh, we also have a situation where a crime has occurred in the, uh, in, in the consular mission, which is covered by the Vienna uh, Convention on, on consular relations, which is d different to the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations. Um, but you also have part of the crime um, being carried out outside of the protection of that consular mission. Um, of course, and as the last guest has said, what we, what we need to rely on is credible evidence as to exactly what happened. Um, but Turkey is entirely within its right to, uh, to investigate and prosecute this 
before their domestic courts, um, they are entirely entitled to, to seek the extradition of these 18 individuals and, and potentially um, Mohammed bin Salman as well. Um, and obviously there'll be a question of whether he is covered by any form of diplomatic immunity to stand trial. Um, what we could see is if the, the Saudis refuse to cooperate in any form, um, then uh, either the United States or Turkey could effectively take this to the International Court of Justice, um, seeking uh, uh, effectively a declaration that the Saudi authorities should either prosecute or extradite. Uh, we saw that um, some time ago in the case of Hissan Habre, um, when a case was being brought by Belgium against Senegal for, for a former dictator to be, to be tried, and, and effectively he was. So there are a number of questions that, that need to be answered. And, and also, as far as the, the diplomatic relations is concerned, um, we shouldn't forget that the Turkish authorities were invited into the, uh, um, into the consular mission. So the question is whether they can now the Saudis can now fall back on a position of diplomatic immunity uh, remains unclear. Toby, um, there seems the to be two sides to this, is... though. There seems to be two sides to this. You have uh, the legal um, way of working and what is, um, the, what is effectively the legal framework for any potential trial, but there's also the court of public opinion here. Has President Erdogan, by taking ownership of all of the leaks, all that have come out in the last 18, 19 days, uh, meant that he's actually uh, blown away the Saudi narrative out of the water, that nobody's taking that with any kind of seriousness at all? Yes, I think that's right. Um, and as, as the previous guest in New Jersey uh, quite rightly stated, it, that uh, in situations such as this, it's the cover-up which is a bigger issue than the act itself. Um, and the fact that the Saudis came out with a number of different positions fundamentally undermines their position. Um, and I think there is some criticism to be made of President Trump as well for, for uh, initially uh, accepting the Saudi uh, um, position without looking into it further. Of course, he said he wanted to see evidence and that's the position he's taken now. Um, and, and of course, he, he will reserve his position um, going forward. But I think that the position that has now been set out by, by Turkey through President Erdogan's um, speech um, very, very clearly states that the, the response by, by the Saudis is uncredible. And as a result of that, there is no confidence in s allowing the Saudis to investigate and prosecute the, this themselves. Because let's bring in Stephen Rogers here. Going to do let's bring in Stephen Rogers here. You heard uh, Toby there say uh, that President, the U.S. President Donald Trump, could be criticised for believing the Saudi version of events if it's proved beyond doubt that the Crown Prince was indeed involved in this. Doesn't that cast doubt over both the US President Donald Trump and his cosy relationship with uh, Mohammed bin Salman and uh, his son-in-law's relationship with the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman? Haven't they just picked bad friends and allowed them to uh, indulge their Saudi friends to the point where something like this may uh, have been uh, uh, done at the, the highest levels, been uh, this was at the high, if it's proved with him doubt, it was done at the highest levels. I don't think the president took the Saudi side. I think he took the side of trying to ensure that we received all of the evidence necessary to draw a, a, a conclusion that is based on facts, not on evidence. Uh, he certainly made it clear that a person uh, is innocent until proven guilty, not the other way around. So the course of action he took was very prudent, very careful. He it wasn't didn't that want careful. to he said shoot it was from the hip or when it jump began. the gun, as we say. He was, it's not that crazy. Well, you know. well I, I've got to tell you, I, I, well, well, I've spent uh, my good part of my life in law enforcement and investigating cases, and uh, the initial response of the Saudis was all we had to go on, and there was some credibility, I must tell you, based on... Uh, uh, the uh, framework that we work with in law enforcement. And I would not have jumped the gun. I would have done what the president did. But Toby, he was very consistent. I see you consistent. shaking your head there. Uh, I see you shaking your head there. Why are you shaking your head at what um, Stephen Rogers in New Jersey is saying? Um, with, with all due respect, I mean, uh, I've, I've, I've spent my time as, as a lawyer, a prosecutor. Uh, I, I work very closely with law enforcement. And I completely agree with the point that Stephen says that you do not jump to conclusions. 
you do not judge a case. Of course there is presumption of innocence and of course the evidence has, not, uh, has to be challenged in a court of law, not in the court of public opinion. I understand that entirely. But what President Trump said was that he found the Saudi position credible. Now, that's what he can be criticised for, not what he said subsequently. What he said subsequently was measured and, and appropriate, but what he said initially was that he found it credible. Now, that account has subsequently shown to, to be lacking in any credibility, but my position is that the pres President Trump jumped to, to the defence of the Saudis by saying that their position was credible when everyone else was saying it is lacking any credibility. That's why I think President Trump can be criticised. But I think we have to see and we have to judge President Trump and his administration on what he does from this position on. We've already seen a number of other countries, uh, the UK, France and Germany, that have strongly criticised, that are uh, reassessing their relationship with the Saudis. And they should, because this is not the only problem that we are facing from the Saudis. They're, their record on human rights, certainly since Mohammed bin Salman has been in power, is appalling. There is Yemen. Let's, there let's is bring in Stephen here because because that's very interesting. Let's bring in Stephen Rogers but, here in Nutley, New Jersey. You've heard what Toby Cadman just had to say. He just said uh, that there needs to be a reassessment of the relationship between the U.S. and Saudi Arabia. But I asked the question that I asked you before again. Um, is the relationship too cosy? Is the relationship too important when it comes to money for that relationship to be reassessed, reset? Well, I think the relationship will continue. I don't see the relationship breaking apart. But you said something uh, earlier that I think we need to revisit. And it's an interesting point that you were bringing up about the trial. Uh, for example, uh, can these individuals that the Turkish government uh, is talking about, will they get a fair trial in Turkey? But more importantly, what if an order, what if it's found out that an order was given to them from someone within the Saudi government? That is where we have the great, great problem. Uh, what happens then? I believe what happens, at least uh, uh, on the U.S. side, is that uh, the president will, will, would address that very strongly and very sternly. We don't know what happened. We don't know if an order was given. We don't know if the, uh, the king knew about this. Hopefully, we will find out. But the person or the people that has to clean up that mess are the Saudis not the United States government. I think our relationship, and, and hopefully with Turkey and with Saudi Arabia, will continue uh, in the future and become strong after this uh, episode is complete. But there's only one way out, and that's the truth. And the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Gallup, let me bring you in here from London. Um, the truth, the whole truth, it all needs to come out. But our friend uh, Stephen Rogers in uh, New Jersey said that he didn't think they could face a fair trial in Turkey. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I don't know based on what grounds, uh, because the crime has been committed in Turkey. And uh, as our, our other guest in uh, London has indicated, that Turkey is entirely in its right to ask for the trial of these people uh, in Turkey because diplomatic immunity does not afford you uh, the right of killing uh, someone inside a consulate. So therefore, like what Turkey is asking is not uh, outside of the uh, international law. What Turkey is asking is very much within the in framework of the international law to conduct, uh, to basically try these people who committed a crime on Turkish soil. Secondly, I think we are, the discussion is not uh, whether the U.S. or any other country should cut the relation with Saudi Arabia or not. Definitely the relation needs to be revisited. But is Saudi Arabia equals to Mohammed bin Salman? Is Saudi Arabia should be reduced to Mohammed bin Salman? Because I think what many is saying right now, many people are trying to be careful to make a distinction between Mohammed bin Salman uh, and the Saudi state, Mohammed bin Salman and King Salman himself as well too. I think here the question should be, are we willing to go back to the business as usual with someone 
more or less all the evidence that we had thus far that we have. Thank you, Galip Dele. Sorry, we are out of time. Is... Uh, thank you very much to all our guests, Galip Dele, Stephen Rogers and Toby Cadman. And thank you too for watching. You can see the programme again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Imran Khan, and the whole team here, bye for now.